I said to her, I think I might be the only person who was struggling this way. I am pretty sure it was just me. My body was so wrong. All my friends were better technically. They had better bodies for ballet. I'm pretty sure it was just me who was struggling with this. Hey dancers, welcome back to the Whole Dancer YouTube channel. I am so thrilled to connect with you all once again and to share that I am getting back to YouTube on a more regular basis. Today's video, it's gonna be kind of like an intro video and what to expect from the channel. So I wanna share a bit about myself and my journey and why I've started The Whole Dancer. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna share what topics you can expect to see here so that you know if this is a good place for you and if you wanna click the subscribe button and like the video. So I am Jess Spinner. I'm a former professional ballet dancer and now a health, nutrition, and lifestyle coach for aspiring and professional dancers, though I also work with a lot of adult dancers and retired dancers as well. So it's all pretty much in the dance space. And it took a, quite a path to get there. And that's kind of what I figured I'd share with you today. Beyond that, I want to commit to giving you all at least two new YouTube videos every month, though there could be more. I would like to do more, but I want to under promise and over deliver instead of the other way around. If you want more content from The Whole Dancer, head over to The Whole Dancer blog where there are new articles just about every week. And the best way to get notified about all of it is on The Whole Dancer email list, which you can also sign up at thewholedancer.com and I'll link in the show notes below here as well. So intros. I'm going to start at the beginning. I've been interviewed on a lot of podcasts lately and I always have to do my spiel, my intro, and I should be an expert at it, but somehow I still am not. I started dancing little, but it was at a very recreational, not competitive or anything like that studio, not professional training, not competitive, just recreational. And it was combination ballet, tap and jazz. So I would go for 90 minutes and do all three at once, well, 30 minutes <laughs> of each. Not all three at once, that would be really hard. Ballet was always my favorite from the beginning. I was always very flexible, and so my dance teachers tended to utilize that in choreography regardless of what we happened to be doing. Except tap, that would be strange, I think. I stayed there for a while, for many years, actually, and I loved the costumes. That was probably the, the first thing I loved about dancing, was to dress up in these costumes. Which is a little funny because in real life, like if there's a costume party, a Halloween party, a theme party, I want to have nothing to do with it. My friends have to like force me into wearing a costume, but I love the costumes and dance and that not remained with me for my whole career. So I danced at the same school until I was about 12. And at that point, my studio owner told me, I think you should go somewhere else and get more professional training, especially if you really love ballet. And she had actually put us on point. I probably was on point at 10 or 11, which is, you know, not a terribly early age, which is okay. but. She did encourage me to go elsewhere. So I started looking around on Long Island where I'm from. My mom and I looked at some other places and I ended up at the American Theater Dance Workshop, which was the school affiliated with Iglevsky Ballet at the time. And that's where I did all my high school training. I went to summer intensives each year. I went to Kirov Academy, Boston Ballet, North Carolina School for the Arts, ABT in New York. Later on, I attended Orlando Ballet summer dance program. But my whole dance journey in high school, it started, early teens, it started for me. I got my first body comment. And so my journey became quite clouded by my preoccupation with my body and food. And it was a very obsessive relationship with these things where I was always trying to be on some sort of diet and I always felt like my body was wrong for ballet. But despite that very negative feeling about food and myself, I persisted and I studied dance and arts administration at Butler University. I loved Butler. I love the social aspects of Butler. I love that it was kind of like a normal-ish feeling college experience with a conservatory dance program, which is something that they say about Butler being one of the top programs with a ballet focus was that you'll get, you know, conservatory style schedule and training amidst a liberal arts education. It's a lot to juggle, but it is possible. And we did also have a lot of fun. After Butler, I went and danced with the Louisville Ballet for a couple of years. And then following Louisville, I moved to Boston and freelanced in the Boston area before ultimately an injury, kind of an injury, but a lot of it I think was I was struggling to recover from this injury and I believe this was perhaps mental, emotional pain manifesting physically, which is something I say to my dancer clients who are injured, something for them to think about is if this is physical, 
pain coming from emotional trauma, which means they might need to go and work with somebody who can support them in working through that trauma. For me, it was definitely a big part of it. And that's a big part of where the whole dancer comes from. Before I get there, I'll say, after I finished dancing, after I stopped, I did retail stuff, I was a nanny, and I was finally like, okay, I have to figure out what's next. I don't see myself doing this long term. And so I said, okay, what am I gonna do next? And I had always had this interest or obsession with food and nutrition. So that was where my mind went. But I wasn't finding programs that fully resonated with what I wanted to do. And at the time I knew some people in the wellness space and I knew a lot of people in yoga and I knew people who had gone through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And just the message there really resonated with me as a holistic approach to health and wellness and food and your body. And so that's where I did my primary health coach training. I've done other trainings. I did actually a different one before that. And I have done others since then. And getting training and education and certifications is something that I am incredibly passionate about just because I wanna have new ways to support dancers and new information always to share with you. So that's just a commitment for me to you is to continue to give you new information and more creative, perhaps, approaches to what you're going through to make it sustainable shifts in your life and dancing. And when I first started health coaching, I had no interest in working with dancers. It had kind of crossed my mind, but I had a lot of reasons, a very long list of reasons why I didn't think I should go that path. And part of it was I was afraid, I think, for myself to get back in that world, knowing what it had done to me and the pain I felt surrounding my dance journey and the failure that I felt surrounding my dance journey. I wasn't satisfied with my professional experience. I didn't think it was enough. For a period of time, I was like, well, you were a paid dancer, so shouldn't that be enough? But it really didn't feel like I had made it. And I think a lot of dancers do that to themselves. But getting back to that world just felt scary and like it was gonna be potentially painful. So I avoided it for a couple of years and I worked with non-dancers regular folks, work in nine to fives. But like I said, I had never worked a nine to five. So while I could imagine the struggles there, I just didn't fully feel connected to those clients. So I started working with a business coach and in our very first session, she said to me, well, it sounds like you should be working with dancers. And I was like, oh, you're right. I knew she was right. I knew it and I felt it and I knew that dancers needed it. Well, actually, at first I didn't know. At first I was like, I said to her, I think I might be the only person who was struggling this way. I'm pretty sure it was just me. My body was so wrong. All my friends were better technically. They had better bodies for ballet. I'm pretty sure it was just me who was struggling with this. So I did some research and connected with a, a number of friends, a large number of friends and peers and dancers and asked some questions about their experience and what they felt surrounding their journey and any feelings surrounding their body and criticism that, that they faced and what their relationship to food was like. And overwhelmingly, it was this very out of balance experience, at times very negative, very challenging mentally, very challenged relationships with food and a lot of unhelpful or negative body image. So it was clear at that point that working with dancers was the path that I should go and wanted to go. So like I said, that was back in 2015 and things have evolved over time, but some stuff has stayed really quite consistent. And I would say the number one thing is that my goal is to support dancers in creating a balanced approach to dance and food and your body and your life. Because I do believe you can find balance. It looks different for everyone, but you can find it and you can bring that with you into this career or into these dance pursuits, whatever they happen to be. But you might not go there easily or automatically, which is where I hope the whole dancer can come in for you. Some of the big topics we'll cover here will be nutrition and healthy eating. And again, like what's a balanced approach to these things for you? And how can you add more to your eating plan in order to find a sustainable approach to nutrition and food for dancing? Body image is another big one. And I believe as much as you might face challenges with body image, you can build body image resilience. And this can help you come back to a more helpful view of yourself, a more helpful view of what your body does for you in dance and find a sustainable and again, helpful approach to your body as your very 
necessary instrument in this art, right? You can't dance without it. So we have to start treating it well and acknowledge what it does for us. Going along with that for me is self-care. And I talk to dancers about routines. I think that's part of self-care. So routines, practices outside of the studio that help you to recover, making sure that you're giving your body and mind time to recharge and rest and relax. So all the self-care things are going to be tied into this channel as well. And finally, we'll talk about mindset in relation to food and your body and your approach to dancing and your dance goals. I think that a lot of times dancers have this very defined idea of what success in dance is. And a lot of times it's not something that you yourself have created. It's something that comes from the messages you've heard from those around you. And you can be successful in dance in a lot of ways. And you can be successful in dance in ways that you didn't think were success, but it's up to you to define it that way. So we'll talk about the mindset surrounding success. We'll talk about mindset in relation to food and your body and just relationship to all of those things. If you have specific topics within any of those categories that you'd like me to touch on, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, you can start to expect more regular videos, at least two a month, but I am going to try to do more than that. Give me a thumbs up and share this video if you think you have any friends or peers or if you're a dance teacher and have students who would benefit from this kind of YouTube support, please share the video with them. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, welcome back or welcome to the Whole Dancer YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.